Hey guys, it's Celine. It's Friday. Is that the 11th? I think it's the 11th of February 23, right? I'm doing a witchy check-in of sorts and we will be... If I manage to do this, okay. <laughs> I'm not completely confident because I'm a bit tired and a bit iffy, but more of that when as we proceed, hopefully. Uh, it, we should be uh, talking about crystals and crystals, okay? And the connection of crystals for me to what I'm coming to know as the astral realm, the astral experience, hopefully. Because the strongest, most consistent uh, experience that I have that connects to those kinds of realms as I go forward with this okay has to do with crystals um, as I have come to know them so there's a vibrational experience attached to these things this is an celestial by the way it's a really wonky weird shaped smoky quartz I have two more in front of me. There is another really weird uh, wonky. I'm trying to make it show the facets a bit, if possible. Uh, this is a also a celestial. Um, mainly the inside is sort of white uh, rock crystal, so sort of colorless. And on the outside, there's a couple of small darker. You can see there's a dark stripe there. Uh, darker bits that are also probably smoky quartz. I'm fairly confident. It has created like, um, I'm just trying to show this. Oh yeah, like this you can sort of see that there's bits sticking out. All these are really well-formed crystal ends. And it has like a whole, what looks like a layer of text uh, sitting, see? On the, uh, on the dark stripe there. What looks like a layer of language of some sort. Uh, these are called etchings. I am nuts about celestials. I am officially bonkers nuts <laughs> about crystals in general. You know, you can hardly think, I don't think there's a crystal in the universe that I don't either have in my possession one of or several, uh, or that I'm not really in love with. So it's my thing. It has been my thing since I was like five years old or so. And I have a growing collection. What can you do? They're also, it's like a connection between witchy experiences, vibrational experiences, and what I'm coming to call astral experiences. Because it's a different cup of tea in my book. Okay, so I've had a huge, fantastic, wonderful experience yesterday that I want to talk about. But I want to sort of introduce us into the subject gently and at ease okay and one thing at a time um because i also really don't have um enough of a of an idea how far it really went or it it, it is really easy to sort of uh second guess oneself right in all these things in all these experiences it is i think very normal and also to a large extent healthy to not so much second guess as question always what it is that you're um, that you're doing and also what it has done for you, what you have done for it um, a week down the line or a month down the line or so on and so forth, how much it will keep. That's always something I'm kind of, you know, I tend to worry about those things. What, what, which is not a good thing, which is not necessarily healthy, but... <laughs> It's normal, okay? That happens a lot of times. So these, okay, these celestials are part of my crystal collection. There's a, f the, they, these are like three of maybe six or seven or so celestials that I um, have in my, um, in my keeping. Um, the smoky quartz, the white uh, rock crystal type, this is a uh, citrine and it has been it has been through the mill this one not in my life just as it got created i mean everything 
that can happen to a crystal I think happened to this one it is so wonky and it has so many weird bits to it and it is extremely powerful this is a very happy citrine tends to be a happy crystal uh, in my experience certainly all well, this is speaking in general what will happen for most people I think the smoky quartz that I started off with I find to be more grounding and clearing the brain and helping me to sort of bring a bit more structure into my story which is why I will keep hold of this one for now okay the other two are really different each one has a different vibration I think there are general rules as to a citrine will be a happy vibration for many people it doesn't mean that that applies to everybody in the same way of course okay I think a lot of it is really like that it's not that it doesn't make people happy in the same way it's that people do not need that kind of vibration in the same way so then if the vibration comes to them you either want it or you don't which is completely of course it's a free world where you certainly with crystals you can more or less uh, you know have any experience you like it's all there it's all gorgeous and it's all beautiful so uh, but that doesn't mean even if I feel that all of that stuff that I've got over here sitting on my table I've got this one for example which is a completely different uh, type of exterior surface this is a so-called code keeper uh, crystal quartz crystal I'm more and more fascinated by how many quartzes there are and how different they are in terms of vibration it's just mind-blowing it's completely insane how how many sides there are to these things and the difference between this thing and this thing um, is just like huge so the thing I'm talking the reason why I'm talking about my crystals today is that I am going to if all goes well visit uh, my favorite uh, in the world <laughs> in the universe uh, crystal shop tomorrow and I needed a couple of things sorted out and sort of prepared and a couple of things have happened to me as a result of doing that so first of all I'm gonna sort of move my things over to the side slightly so I can have more easy access to my things in case I want them um because I was working already towards selecting from my collection of crystals that I have in several places in the house um those types which for me have an invitation or a some kind of a message that for me connects to the astral sp specifically uh, and whatever that really means I mean I made a selection okay which I might as well share with you as I sit here and talk hang on a second because then I will just grab these little bags that I've got over here I've got three little bags by now which contain my selection so the celestials, okay this lot here that I was talking about just now for some reason I would not necessarily uh, see these except maybe for the citrine this one okay I don't think these would qualify as um, astral connectors or astral travel enablers for example you know you can you f think of words for this <laughs> because this is all new territory to me okay I have found other types of crystals these work very much for me on my mind so they make me more open and ready to engage with other types of vibrations I think that celestials specifically and also this thing here are more what I personally feel as therapeutic so they reorganize me internally um, they work on me as I live in my body with my experiences as a human as a female with the past I have and all those things they tend to be huge cleansers working with celestial crystals if you do that make sure to always hydrate and you always have to make sure you hydrate anyway whether you're just loading cargo or working with this stuff but it's 
equally strenuous sometimes. Elestials pack a punch, okay? I've experienced this before. And so, yeah, so I'm just saying. <laughs> Make sure you get enough drinkies and you are, um, you know, doing this in a, in a way that is safe. It Vibrational work, this is all vibrational work, but it can be really impactful. I have worked with my Elestials for, I think I have had these crystals, this set that I showed you just now, for four or five years at least. And I am not done with any of them. I know that, especially the citrine type, I have had to have a long time getting to know the vibration of this particular crystal. And I'm only really now starting to appreciate it and to know what it is telling me. I didn't used to actually be able to feel anything around this one. I still have crystals, also celestials or others, you know, that I don't know what they mean for me yet, which is very cool. Okay, so, um, but there's a, a, a part of this whole process that has to do with um, watching out for health issues making sure you stay in a balanced situation for yourself, uh, you know, taking notes, whatever works for you, whether it works to take notes or not, okay? So, but I have a different type of crystals, apparently, from that set, that I felt like, okay, these are more or less the types of stones that they're more emotional, okay? More directly emotional, than the others they're not so much about cleansing or about um re reprogramming your your mind if you like or your vibrational state they're more directly personal that is probably what i am trying to say here and not e not all are equally personal but that is of course very personal which crystal will be like that for you is it just depends on who you are where you are and what you're doing right so i'm going to take them all out of their bags now so i can actually show you what it is that i'm on about this is a separate adventure here this is a separate adventure i'm going to set to the side even i have lots of little baggies and bits and things hopefully to in order to keep track of where everybody is staying at oh yeah this is a really spectacular one it's my moldavite it takes some time getting out of here moldavite i have i know this thing quite well i respond to it with a great deal of enthusiasm inside i can sort of feel a whole um <laughs> fantastic uh glorious it's kind of green if you can see that, maybe fold it like this. Uh, translucent, beautiful stone. I think it's uh, one I inherited from somebody or other. Very special, very very uh, unique kind of a vibration, Moldavite. Okay. I will put a link or I'll put uh, names of crystals that I'm, na that I'm mentioning in this video in the description, one after the other. Okay, so... You can look those up if you want, and if some if there's a crystal that really jumps out to you, and you that as you as I show them, you know, uh, you can uh, go ahead and look those up. This is a fluorite, pale pink fluorite that I found myself. Uh, that definitely belongs in my celestial category. Actually, this whole thing kind of got started. Um, I'm being visited now by a very small very pretty white spider and I just oh I just scared you you just walk on right ahead I'd like to show him to you I'm normally not very fond of spiders but maybe I can actually show him where is he at that's where he's at see he <laughs> We'll try to get him outside. I'm pausing now because I need to get a little spider guy outside, okay? <laughs> he's outside. I think he's much happier outside. He walked right onto a green leaf and uh, like uh, in a hurry, like, okay, this is uh, where I need to be. Thank you very much. So 
you don't know. That was kind of unique because I don't normally, I, we do occasionally get spiders in the living room because countryside, you know, and then I, uh, those are different. Those are not those cute little white guys. So yeah, I hope you could see them. We'll have to, uh, I'll have to watch myself back later anyway because of the list of names of the, of the whole thing. Now I have to get back on track with myself. The pink fluorite belongs in my in a pouch that I've worn for quite a while with a rose quartz like so. I think I already showed this. A beautiful moonstone. These three go together. They're also very emotional, very personal, right? It's not necessarily always emotional. It's that it has to do with how I look at myself. It has to do how I experience my life, my priorities. The It kind of... The whole of the collection, as I have got it now in front of me here, gives me a sense of definition of who I really am, which is vibrational and you cannot really put that into words. It's not something I feel the need either to say, okay, this particular stone does that kind of thing for me. And this one does something else. This is, I believe, a kyanite. I'm not completely sure. It's also kind of pink and pale, pale, slightly violet, slightly lavender-ish, pinky, very pale color, very transparent as well. I think it's a kyanite, but the other kyanites I have are all much darker and um, I'd have to check that. But it's also a very specific vibration and it's like a gentler version in between the Moldavite, which is a very powerful, joyful stone, and the Rose Quartz. This would m maybe sit somewhere on that spectrum, but in the middle between those two. Well, they're really extremes, of course. This is a lavender, uh, like a Rose Quartz. So it's a Rose Quartz officially. At least that's how I bought it. But it color is much more lavender-like than... than um, I don't know if you can see the di oh yes you can see the difference in tint quite obviously much cooler tone I bought this because I thought it was just gloriously pretty it's very transparent it's almost like a scrying crystal and um, it's got facets break lines in the surfaces in there and um, I have not worked with this at all in the sense of sitting with it and just seeing what happens i will do that you know somewhere in the near future the other ones i have shown you so far i am fairly familiar with either because i worked with them or because i uh have worn them you know for for a couple of years even some of them i am familiar with like for example this moonstone is a white moonstone that has um can I show this to you in a way that you can see? It doesn't have many shiny bits. It's one of those very opaque moonstones, whereas this little one here is much more transparent. So there's a difference in, um, in price range also. They're very much more... Um, the white opaque moonstones tend to be uh, cheaper. They're actually really affordable considering that they come from the other side of the planet. I... Uh, yeah. So I have added to my astral travel collection if you want to call it that these two uh, bits of fossilized petrified wood that I think will just they're from the same uh, original piece of trunk that they sawed and polished uh, I find these to be kind of necessary in the collection in this small sort of subsection of everything I have uh, to ground the the thing you know for me to have this the possibility of hanging on to one of these or both of them as everything else tends to be really either emotional personal or impactful like the moldavite in ways that i can't even really begin to describe so they're here for a reason and they're definitely staying um let me see the other thing that I want to definitely show you is I've got a set, separate little silk baggie 
that contains my set of pearls, like so. These are also extremely powerful. They're just wild sea pearls, not river pearls, different tints. And they are really pretty and shiny. Um, one of them is actually quite hollow. <laughs> it has, you can see how it really has a, a layer over the top of another. You can maybe see that, okay? So these are a bit more fragile on the outside. The surface is a bit fragile, so that's why I keep them in a separate little... It's just fiddling around with bags and things, you know, because we like to do that. Um, very much pearls, very much about liberation and freedom, freedom of experience, also freedom of skin and body. Very important. Have to have them. I think if you think of things as a, as a spectrum okay i would say the pearls and the moonstone are very much part of that kind of a visceral part of life the rose quartz and the fluorite and the moonstones have everything to do with knowing your own emotional life and being accepting, accepting, having acceptance in yourself for who you really are. So they're important in that sense. They're also helping to stabilize um, all the things, you know. And you could probably, what I'm probably going to do at the mineral shop tomorrow, my crystal shop, is to, I've got a list that I made on the basis of the blogs that they make and things like that, where they bring in new material and things, a new... Uh, new types of crystals that they just get and they have to do the whole, <laughs> you know, the whole thing of finding out what they are for, what the qualities of the stones are and so on and so forth. It's a really an adventure always. So I will probably be adding to my collection. I've got a couple of things that I've got my eye on. And um, hence also this video because as I inventory what I got, I know... What it is that I may add to this and how that will work. Okay, so that it'll join join up together and be a nice um, sort of a working kit to you know do the things with. So a couple of stones that are quite in with the pearls that are quite visceral and sort of close to yourself. I think this one uh, will also go in that set. I'm not sure too much about the kyanite. This goes towards the higher chakras more. And the third eye, in my experience, okay, third eye um, part of things, which is, of course, where you connect to, in, in what I have been doing, it goes through the third eye, okay, through this whole area there that has been enormously activated recently. Uh, because of my TUMO work that I'm doing on that. So for more info on TUMO, watch my previous video because there's lots of that. Okay, so another, um, let me see, another really crucial element in the personal aspect of this whole astral thing here. So having to do with um, your reaction to yourself. That's what I'm basically trying to say with personal crystals, personal vibrations in in crystals, okay? They have to do with how you react to yourself, whether you're good at accepting yourself the way you are. And we may think we are in a lot of ways, and then you hold one of these, and it turns out there's work to be done. For, you know, in one way or another, one of a dozen possible ways. We, I certainly very much think that the more I do this kind of thing, the less I really know about myself, the less I can really um, state confidently that I am completely in control. Heck no. <laughs> it is a large scale adventure with lots of different influences and a lot of things that I've never even begun to fathom how they really work. So we're exploring, okay? These two are amethyst crystals, actually, and I have one more amethyst that is part of my kit, but not necessarily in with these. These are really pale 
amethyst crystals, as you can see. They also hold what's called cacoxonite. I hope I pronounced that, pronounced that right. They're really um, little sort of bits of a... Uh, I have a larger one here that I may be able to show you um, the thing on. There's like little coppery stripes in there. I hope you can make that out. I would hold it to the closer to the camera and I can, of course. Well, you can see some of it. There's like reddish, obviously coppery reddish bits in there. Okay, like that maybe. And darker little stripes. So they're like um, radiating little separate crystals inside the amethyst and they look a bit coppery in color and that's the cacoxonite, okay? And working together with the amethyst, I get a, an experience with this that I've had earlier this week uh, that is also to do with the personal acceptance and the acceptance of the emotional life. But in a larger scale for me, this has helped me hugely this week in my process that I was in that I hopefully will eventually <laughs> manage to talk about. Um, in that it gives me a very strong sense of safety. This is also given as a vibrational property of these crystals in the uh, you know en energy database that I have been using. They're actually saying that this is a crystal for feeling safe. So I have mixed emotions with this one. Uh, as much as I love it and appreciate it, I do feel that the acceptance of feeling safe that way is a whole spiel. I have to spiel with that. I have to, um, you know, work with it internally. And some of that work actually also happens outside of my field of vision. I cannot see what is going or let, let it all let alone control what is going uh, you know if that was something that i was wanting so but i was wearing this big one uh on here you know in a pouch on my on my heart chakra um for quite a lot of the week also today uh quite a bit and i think i'm getting used to it a bit more now where what with other things okay so this is one part of that whole story the other part that i still got i think i have two more that i really want to show you so this is uh two specimens that are in the natural crystal shape also you would say rock crystal and that's the end of it actually no these are so-called magdalene quartzes and so are these except these are polished okay they're basically your rock crystal with little iron hematite red bits in. So comparable to the amethyst story of a sort of an inclusion in your crystal that then transforms the whole thing into something completely different. That is the case for Mary Magdalene's. Okay, I, that's what I call them because that's how I got to know them. I love these. I always have. I Now I feel that they're... I have to reconnect with them slightly. I, I'm not surprised at the Mary Magdalene name any longer, or maybe I never was, in the sense that this has a very high frequency um, level of devotion in it. So you're going from this whole emotional range of acceptance and safety and all the rest of it, and rose quartzes and moonstones and so on. Now you're moving to an area that is really about doing spiritual work and I would go, was going to say religious work, whatever that really means, okay? But it does take you out of yourself and out of your, possibly out of your comfort zone. Magdalene quartz, okay? Really excellent. I have two other little ones in here that I'm going to take out that I'm still finding quite difficult, at least one of them. To connect to and that will complete my uh, overview of this collection okay I didn't even know that I was going to want to do that but yes 
uh, I find it really useful because I can see that there's connections between the stones also and at the one of, sort of this group has this effect and the other group has the other effect so then it's a bit more of a <laughs> study field you know where you actually know what you're doing theoretically sort of at least partly <laughs> you're partly knowing what you're doing I do not get this not untied in the meantime uh, there's two little bits in here a fascinating little stone that I have shown several times before on my channel but the last time was certainly a year ago or so I have not worked with crystals nearly at all I think all bloody winter which goes to show I was not a happy camper over the past uh, the, the second half of 22 I'm not kidding okay so I have here a, a quartz, another quartz, okay, a rock crystal with a green sort of sandy inclusion. This may well be a silver lining Lemurian or some such kind of a object. I will have to look this up, see whether that is what this is. This is a very... It is co comparable to the Mary Magdalene Quartz in the sense that it is a much higher vibration. You get into light language territory here, which is useful for the whole astral path connection still, right? It activates like little bits in here that open up to the to over there, to the higher end of the spectrum in a way. It's also quite incisive. It's like it perforates a path for itself. It drills a path. So even though this is a fairly small stone, um, I'm not surprised. I haven't worked with this or sat with this for such a for such extensive amounts of time. Comparing to this, this is way the Magdalene, right? Way more emotional than this one. Goes to show. I will put the names in the description, okay? The last one I want to show you is another amethyst. A small um, encapsulated uh, phantom amethyst, actually. Oh, there you can see that there's an amethyst inside a clear quartz. Very clearly, right? Not only that, it has drops of water and air bubbles inside. At least two that I've been able to make out. Inside the amethyst that is in here, which you I cannot show you because it's just camera things, okay? There is like a space, um, maybe like a bit like a tulip, like so, folded areas. And in the folded areas that are open spaces, there's water in and a few bubbles. I have not been able to connect to this little thing here at all. I appreciate it for what it is in geological, geoformation terms, mineralogical terms. I appreciate it a lot. And I have no idea. This is a vibration that I just cannot access. I cannot get in touch with it. If I ever do, you'll be the first to know. But I can connect just fine with a gazillion other amethyst crystals that I have of varying uh, type and density and dark or brightness and various types of inclusions as, as I've shown you and um, this one no go no idea not a clue what it is really about so to be continued right but it belongs in my in my pack in my set of the whole um, astral path thing here and uh, tomorrow I'm going to go to get possibly black quartzes which have to do also with grounding aspects of self and things like that there's one thing that i've seen on the website and there's a couple of other things that i need to uh, so to be continued on that end okay probably next week when i um, manage that the thing the other thing so the other half to this whole story here is that i find it's really, I, I think it's kind of impossible to really talk about one's personal 
dealings with the astral necessarily but i'm gonna try it anyway for maybe 10 minutes hopefully and then that will be it for today hmm. um where i am certainly noticing things that come back okay so i can create visits to the what i call my astral connection my astral place um maybe once a week or so for sure it takes quite some focus i have to leave other things behind so a place where this works for me is in the bath for example silence no music no nothing I've done my bit of reading and then all of a sudden i feel like okay so this is a good moment it's quiet enough for me to get this focus level to where I can connect to the astral realm, okay? And then there's this mind chatter that goes on still, that I'm still trying to talk to myself or make things happen or look for things or I'm investigating or trying to want things in the astral. And then, of course, none of that really works. That is quite crucial. I notice each and every time as I do this and as I learn, okay, that... This is something I can learn to do by doing it, first of all. This is a type of meditation, but it's very specific and it's very real, okay? Whenever I've done my mind chattering and I feel like okay, it's not going anywhere, no, let it go, relax, let it be, surrender, and so on, at some point, something comes to my mind vision I am in a in a place in my mind. Everything is really quiet and really different then all of a sudden and I'm suddenly personally involved. That is my sort of a keynote where I'm suddenly aware, okay, now I'm actually in my astral, on my astral path or working in my astral field for real you cannot that's why i'm saying you cannot really explain this or you cannot really uh, put words to it because it's really difficult you can describe i can describe what it is that's going on so yesterday i had a really splendid experience that i probably won't be able to convey to you but it was really extraordinary and i'm endlessly grateful that i had it um it turns out that I have a very huge, not considering any of this collection here, I have a huge affection for green stones, okay, emeralds, chrysoprase is my top favorite stone since all time. Uh, I don't even have that many. There's like not many stones of the t type and caliber that I, uh, that I use the whole time that are in this kind of a green range. I have a blue-green fluorite that is also really gorgeous and that just works uh, beautifully. In my astral field experience that I had yesterday, I suddenly came into a, a space that had a seven-pointed star painted on the floor. It wasn't really painted, but it looked like that, like drawn on the floor in a dark green and at each of the seven points, and there was one point behind me, was a very large uh, translucent green crystal, like the best type emerald crystal you could imagine. A large, um, sort of a straight edged, shining crystal. You could imagine like one of these, but in a very potent emerald green color. I had a dream once about that kind of surroundings without the seven-pointed star and the rest of it. Just the crystals sitting in like a cloud surrounding. The one of the happiest dreams I've ever had. There was nothing going on, nothing special in the dream. It was just an extraordinary, inexplicable experience of being connected to that world. I've always remembered that. That dream, maybe 15, more than 15 years ago that I had it one time only and i've always remembered it 
those types of crystals were what showed themselves first in my astral field at that time, okay, yesterday. So, but with this time, they were organized along this uh, heptagonal uh, field here with this seven-pointed star in the middle. And I sat in the middle, and I have heard other people say that this is important. And this is, of course, another personal aspect of this whole thing. Uh, this is how it goes for me, is that there was an, an energy that I am okay calling Archangel Raphael, okay, uh, that showed themselves to me. It's kind of iffy to talk about even at this point or in this way. But it's what it, it's what it's how it came out to me. Okay? It's again, like I've said before in these kinds of experiences, it's very consistent. I know this type of vibration to the extent that I am allowed to know it, okay, to resonate with it. Uh, so that I can actually recognize it when it shows up. And this is, it's okay to call him, him, it, Raphael, Raphael, okay? So, very strange, very mystical, nearly Christian. <laughs> if that were a thing in my life, I have Mother Mary statues all over the place, and I am, um confident that angels are an experience that is actually a fact of life it's a a it is a a a truth if you like so to speak but you have to sort of um align yourself with that kind of vibration in order to be able to experience it it's always about the alignment that's what the crystals are for to align us with certain parts of ourselves. So, Raphael is there, and I am sort of sitting at their feet, and apparently the thing that has been bugging me over the past uh, six months in this whole period of time where it was really uncomfortable, and I was more and more desperate about how to how to think about myself, my life, my background, you know, the, the past uh, trauma, my parents, everybody else, again came to the surface. Over the past months, I've done a couple of videos also where I referenced this. I, uh, in November, I actually had a complete redo of my parents' birth charts. I have this very unique, strange situation that my parents were born on the other end of the world in different countries, uh, but two days apart. So they were nearly twins, if you like. In terms of astrology, they were nearly twins. That is one situation. The other situation is that they have astrologically um, really strong characteristics, really strong, weird um a set of them, a handful of extraordinary weird things, you know, in their charts, which added up to them being rather difficult people, okay? So, I'm the ch child of those two, and I am, I have a lot of astrological aspects to these people in my own birth chart. Most of those, most of the whole astrological construction that I have that I share with my parents isn't necessarily that I would think um, that it doesn't have to be a big trauma or a big super huge relational conflict you know between them between them and me I don't really see I've never really seen the reason for there to be that much conflict, the amount of conflict that there has been, okay? Not only between them, between them, my parents, between them themselves, uh, between them and me, and between the whole lot of us and the surrounding world 
and or the ancestors, you know, the grandparents on either side and so on and so forth. I've never understood why it had to be this hard. And I've never also in my actual life, and especially in November, um, up until that point, I've never really seen patterns that explain it's actually the house placement and the ascendance and so on and so forth, which you have to, you know, be fairly familiar with the whole field to uh, even consider what it was that I was doing, you know, because, yeah. Some of that created sort of a breakdown for me in November and I have had a horrible time until recently, that is, until a couple of weeks ago, to... Um, to find acceptance for that, to find, I could see for, for the first time in November, for real, how the interactions worked between the three of us, mainly. And how it is that nobody understood the other person and was forced to project things from their own past onto another person the whole time. That has been my curse, okay? The projecting over and over and over all the time, 100% of the time, it was like you didn't get to interact with the other person one-to-one -one directly. Everybody cared about everybody else. Everybody cared deeply. And everybody was, in one way or another, an emotional person, and a person who invested themselves, and so on and so forth. A serious person, a humorous person, a person with lots of qualities and creative talents, and so on and so forth. But the... The interaction, okay, and the projections, the constant projecting over the, the decades of time, there was just this whole massive wall built up that consisted only of badly digested memories, badly, um, you know, also abuse and violence and there, you cannot blame anybody for... I'm seeing a weird stripe on my face now. That's going to bug me. I'm going to shift you around for a bit. See whether that helps slightly. Okay, just a couple more minutes. <laughs> I saw in my astral field vision yesterday that um, there is like a vibrational quality that my parents and I uh, share, which is the... the in terms of crystals, the the chrysoprase. Okay, hold the phone. I will just grab one. And here it is. Okay, this is chrysoprase. And it's a very warming uh, stone that I've personally always associated strongly with creative work. Being able to have a million ideas going on. Each of them cooking, you know, separately really confident, really, um, you know, hopeful and positive about lots of things. It's a super powerhouse of a stone. And I have several of these and I've never even really uh, had them close to me, either as a pendant, like where I've worn the other ones around my neck or had them in my pockets for days on end, not this because it just really comes home very strongly to me that this is a very personal, this is my personal, like, um, not a birthstone, because that's theoretically uh, your astrological connection to a mineral of some sort. Um, more like your spirit mineral. I think it's Teal Swan who describes uh, spirit minerals at some point. You should look that up, because that's me. If you're into stones, this is the thing. I think this is my spirit mineral or a soul mineral, more like a soul mineral because that is where the connection sits, where that is why I have to go to the astral level 
<laughs> to find that my both my parents did have this quality in them but it was just way hidden and way buried under mountains of rubble and I don't think they themselves ever got to see it or enjoy it at all ever like not for one millisecond so I have a whole new respect a sense of respect and sense of connection with these with this one now um I don't think it necessarily by itself belongs in my astral mineral collection because that's a whole thing, whole different thing. But since having that vision and that experience today and yesterday, that is, um, I have just been such a happy camper, <laughs> which is the other, you know, half, okay, 50 minutes. This is an endless story here. I'm sorry for the novel, you guys. Um... I have just had my tribe given back to me because of the astral experience of connecting with the soul mineral, S-O-U-L, mineral, gemstone, that finally shows me a reason why we were in this together. So that is like, yay, awesome. And I've been going around town like, smiling like an idiot because... This has never happened to me before. And I had to bloody travel to the astral world <laughs> to to find a sense of what it is that why why this turtle and as I sit here and talk about this and the stone is lying here, I can see us in it. And of course they're all positive qualities, and because the soul is positive, that is one of my convictions. The soul itself is indestructible and positive and alive and it's all about life and about going about things in a particular way. I suppose you could have this one as a soul mineral and you'd be a, a completely soul, a soul spirit, you know, soul level, uh, stone, crystal. And you'd be, uh, you'd be a completely different, your, your makeup and your priorities and your motivations would be completely different from this one so but i'm trying to stay under one hour here okay uh this was a glorious experience and i was not expecting it i was really grumpy all morning yesterday and then it just turned it morphed into this and it was just mind-blowing and i have been doing some journaling i've been doing some um and it's like this is this is my astral thing here this is astral healing at its best connecting with energies on a level that you didn't even know was there or that you certainly didn't know that you needed or that I certainly didn't know that there were answers at that I needed. I needed the answers. I was aware of that kind of, but I was looking in all sorts of directions, reading a, a, a gazillion books about past lives and reincarnation and, and it wasn't helping. Astrology wasn't helping any further than the point that it had brought me to. It gave me the analysis of the things in this life. And it isn't, turns out, it isn't about this life only, you know, about the, all the, all the baggage. So I'm going to leave you at, at that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this um, show and tell, I think it is. I uh, am certainly a lot happier having been able to find find words to share some of this with you. I'm going to pack all my crystals back in their respective little baggies. I will also be getting more baggies tomorrow because, yes, why not? And um, happy times, you know? It's cheese. It's like I can see in this what they always wanted. And even that is still sorrowful because my mother, poor cow, you know. It lies buried. It lies hidden so deep. And you just have to travel the world, you know. Thank you for watching Empty Battery. So thank you, my dears. See you uh, next week, hopefully, with more and uh, new stones. Okay, thank you, my dear. See you then. Bye-bye.